Good evening. You're welcome to Democracy in Practice. It is Friday, of course, if you're better on this program. On Fridays, we go interactive on Democracy in Practice, a program where we talk about the well-being and, of course, good governance and the need for Nigerians to enjoy being under what we call a, dem uh, a democratic dispensation. My name is Nerka Luke. Being as it is Friday, we're going to take a review of all that have happened during the week, um, picking them one after the other, of course, and you will call in to be part of our discussion. This is on this program. Um, some persons called in and wanted to talk about um, uh, the, the the take of the North as regards to the presidency come 2019 and another issue. And I told you, no, you cannot talk on about that today. Just hold your pause till today being Friday. So today is Friday. So you can talk of um, all you want to talk on during the week. So all you need to do is to call the numbers and as, as the, 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 the lines are open up. And of course, how we're going to do today is we're going to pick the items one after the other. And as we discuss it, the lines are open up so you can call in and also be part of our discussion. I'm not alone as usual. Rashid is here with me to take down the review for the week. Uh, of course, we'll begin with Monday. Rashid and Yongi, good evening. Evening, Nega. How is your Friday? It's fine, thank you. And how is yours going? Well, thank God it's Friday. All right, I've, of course I know you like Fridays. <laughs> the first day before weekend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then let's just begin with Friday. I'll take the Friday and of course we'll open up the lines. Uh, now, Monday, we informed you uh, that the president of the Senate, Senator Bukola Saraki, observed that the, the current anti-corruption war has not yielded much success because of too much sensationalism tagging the current anti-corruption war as five minutes sensationalism, speak, uh, speaking at the launch of a book written by Kogi West Senator Tino Malaye, tagged the antidote for corruption. The Nigerian story, Saraki said the fight against corruption should focus on deterrence and not punishment. The Senate president said the current government was making efforts in forcing back the menace. That's the major item for Monday. And of course, on Monday, we also informed you that the organization, that the World Health Organization, uh, confirmed that Ebola, that is a, that a second Ebola case in Congo. Of course, so far, there are 19 suspect cases, including the three deaths and two lab confirmed cases. Uh, of course, um, uh, the World Health Organization spokesperson Geneva said uh, this via email. The first case was confirmed on Friday, uh, that is last week Friday, in Basule province in the northeast. The World Health Organization has said the outbreak appears to be limited to that remote area and that there is no need for travel restrictions for the time being. The hemorrhagic fever has been almost uh, detrimental in West Africa, where it claimed more than 11,000 lives in 2014 to 2015. And of course, if you recollect, the federal government has said it has put some measures in place to ensure that Nigeria stays safe from this Ebola. That's what we, we brought to you on Monday. Rashid, you, know, you, you may want to begin to uh, look at uh, the statement uh, um, on Ebola, on um, corruption coming from the Senate president, and I think that's the first one before we got to the Ebola. The, the, the subject has been overflowed. Of course, uh, one wouldn't expect uh, the Senate president to come out so hard on the efforts of the government to curb corruption, uh, given the fact that uh, he's the number three citizen, and he's supposed to have been fully on board with what is happening there. Uh, but don't forget, he's also one of the people standing trial for corruption-related uh, offenses before the uh, Code of Conduct Tribunal. So there's a kind of irony there, you know, uh, it's like um, uh, it's, there's nothing else he will be able to say. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, it does show that there is very little coordination among the major players in this government who are supposed to work together to actually make this corruption war very successful. You know, like some have said, it, it, it appears as if um, not everybody's in this whole war against corruption with the president. Of course, like we, we reiterated last time that when the APC came to power, it told Nigerians that it's going to tackle corruption in security and economy. So it, it means that this is a key um, focus of the APC. Yes. So, uh, But ironically, we're having an APC, a top head on an APC saying that this whole war against corruption is not... Now, uh, but I don't think we should look at it as a complete condemnation. He appears to be saying that the strategy being employed is not the right one. Should we be hearing from... from, from uh, if, if, if there's a problem in the house, don't you think the house should be able to sit down and say, okay, let's come this way. This is one house. 
when you have a problem with your wife, do you expect your wife to come out and tell the world my husband is not doing the right thing, or do you tackle it inside? That's that's where people are looking at looking looking at it from. If 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 the person present has seen that uh, this this fight against corruption is not working, it shouldn't be an it shouldn't be an incident between the APC and let's let's see how we can change it and come in to uh, make a public. I don't think it's a that. party issue, really. Uh, not everybody inside a party shares the same ideas about what to do about anything. Uh, that is the beauty of democracy, I suppose. Uh, but what baffles me is that what is the Senate president doing within his own specific uh, area of competence mm. to actually help in this anti-corruption fight? Because he's the Senate president. He could motivate a lot of issues, a lot of uh, strategies from within the legislature. Take, for example, the proposal to set up special court for corruption, which is right in front of him. So he should be able to speed it up to ensure that... He could that. have speed it, speeded it up. All right. I'm going to open up the lines now, even as we look at the response on Tuesday coming from, um, again, the backdrop of a statement being made by um, Bukola Saraki as regarding the president's war against corruption. But before that, I'll just... Um, was on Tuesday, the chairman, Presidential Adversary Committee Against Corruption, it says Sage has replied the Senate President Bukola Saraki over his attack on the anti-corruption war. Reacting, however, Sage said the federal, gov uh, the federal lawmakers had constituted an opposition to the anti-corruption efforts of the government and anti-graft agencies. He added that the National Assembly was intent on weakening the economic, financial and crimes commission. Sage alleged that the National Assembly has constituted itself into an opposition to the anti-corruption struggle, which he has mounted a war against the, um, against the struggle that the war against corruption struggle, stressing that National Assembly has decided to obstruct it at every stage. Of course, that's a response coming from um, it's uh, I guess, regards to Saraki's committee saying, oh, that the National Assembly has muttered itself against this whole uh, war against corruption. So, hence, that's why you can hear Saraki saying this. And it further confirms your uh, summation that uh, the APC government is a house divided against itself. Uh, you have somebody from the president's side saying that the the, the National Assembly has constituted itself into an opposition. Uh, in appearance, yes, that is very much so. Uh, but we, you shouldn't expect this kind of uh, 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 brick brack between within the same government that has, commi has committed itself during the campaign to fighting corruption. Mm. So it's a saga somehow uh, need to talk to Pre um, Senate President Bukola Saraki so that they can find a common ground upon which to fight this. The most important thing that we have to do in Nigeria now is stem, stem, stem this corruption and ensure that it doesn't lead, uh, it doesn't affect our economy any, any more than it has already done. All right, and now. if they can't, they can't seem to agree on how it should be fought, then we're in trouble. Okay, at this point in time, um, our lines will open up so that as we, as we make our review for the week, you'll be part of our discussion by calling in and making your comment or asking your questions or making your own contributions known. You can dial the number 0806-891-8315. I'll take the numbers again. 0806-891-8315. Or you can dial 0803095-6375. Again, 0803095-6375. Please don't forget to always reduce the volume of your TV or radio set as you call in this evening to be part of our discussion. Your calls now as they come in. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Rashid. Good evening. This is the Zerbi calling from Lagos. Good evening. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Rashid, honestly speaking, sometimes I ask myself, and I always say this and I will say it again and again, what is wrong with this, our politicians? I think it's high time for our legislature to invite, I mean, to create a venue of this uh, independent candidate so that we should not look into the party issue. Because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't expect this coming from, 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 the, from, from the ruling party. But I think, of course, belongs to APC. And uh, likewise, uh, the, the, the House Speaker belongs to APC. Mm. The president is from the APC. What, the, what is the summary of that issue or that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are coming? Uh, so they, 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 the legislature, the legislative chamber and the house of them, they are not in the same ground with the executive council. Believe me, whether you like it or not. So Nigerians should know their right from their left. It's left for us. This is, this is, this, this is the implication of what we call that, that was 2015. Now it's left for Nigerians to know their right from their left. Let us go for merit. Let us go for merit. Forget about who is who. If somebody 
we can deliver to the voters the petition, giving the mandate to the people, let them go. Thank you very much. Thank you, SMB. Yeah. Always very passionate when he wants to talk about the issue that is affecting the country. But before we, we continue, as your calls come in, let's also look at another issue on Tuesday that is the Economic and Economic Rights and Accountability Project has sent an open letter to the acting president, uh, Professor Yumi Oshibanjo, requesting him to put pressure on the leadership of National Assembly to cut the proposed apparently wasteful and unnecessary spending on number of expensive. Uh, official vehicles, legislative aid, travel, transportation, souvenirs, and photocopiers. And the organization urged Oshiba and to ascend to the budget only if it truly reflects national development uh, uh, priorities and not serve as a tool to, to satisfy the lifestyle of our lawmakers. And of course, this, um, this, also, this also happened on Tuesday. Of course, this is coming against the backdrop. A lot of people have said every year, year in, year out, to have these lawmakers uh, bringing in budgets. Um, like my guest asked me, must this lawmakers buy car every year? I call this the no? official no. ostentation, official profligacy. You know, uh, every legislator wants to ride a fancy car, multi million naira car. Um, I remember when uh, Obasanjo was the head of state, military head of state, uh, before, before he came, he and Muritala, before they came, uh, I remember in my state, every official rides in a BMW official car. But, but, even but when they came, mm. they not only banned the use of any car, they, they legislated that all officials must use 504 Pujo, including the head of state. You, to help people sowing into Nigerian's economy. They also help build the Nigerian economy. Mm. We've been talking about buying innocent. In fact, the Senate president appears to be the spearhead of Buy Nigeria movement. Yet, you don't see him in an innocent jeep. Or Pojo. Or Pojo. You see or them riding. Any local. Yes. You know, they see them riding bulletproof Mercedes, BMWs. And strange cars whose name I don't even but know. But even at that Rashid Unyongi, I know if, if one buys a car after one year, has the car bought? I don't understand. Most most cars be bought every year because you know, I don't understand. Take a take a take a cursory look. How many Nigerians actually drive a uh, twenty seventeen model of cars? Except and, government officials. And these are brand new cars we're talking about. And after one year, you you just there is a huge market for two thousand and eight uh, vehicles in Nigeria. Seriously, we have come to that level yet our legislators are not in sync with the aspirations of the ordinary and Nigerians. yet we'll a recession okay let's pick your calls now as you've heard us giving you uh, we've been able to analyze the, the event from monday till tuesday let's hear you as you pick your calls now hello good evening we are connected just turn on the volume of your tv or register let's talk on phone hello. yes good evening welcome to this program Okay, I can hear you. We yeah. can hear you. Hello, good evening. Good evening, we can hear you. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Thank you for, for this uh, issue. Uh -huh. so my we don't know you. What's your that? name? What's your name and where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Abuja. Okay, your name, please. Hello. Yes, hello, good evening. What is your name? Hello, I can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Uh -huh. We feel sure that uh, you have got to the TV. So I just want my name is Ma from Garifa Abuja. Mm. Hello? We can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Okay, I think we'll have to let him go. Okay. The line even went up. Uh, please try call back again. I just heard you from Garimpo Abuja, but the line was not well connected there. Hello, good evening. Are you there? Hello. Good evening. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, sir. What is your name? My name is Sunny Bamboo Sabatiji. I'm calling from the Madrid State. Okay. I'd like to use this opportunity to welcome my special guest for this program. Okay. Hello, you hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Yeah, my question is that. So I tend to reserve 
a good relationship between National Assembly mm. and the President Muhammad Buhari. Okay. Because we, because we people of this Nigeria, we 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 say that the Bengal Sarasi he gets selfish interest. She not giving good support for this Buhari administration. This is my question. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. He's asking, um, is there um, a core relationship between the lawmakers and the presidency, especially when he said the slave president Sima Sibi has a, a selfish uh, motive. That's what he said. Okay, actually, let's pick this call. You may want to react to his question. Hello, good evening. Turn down the volume of your TV set. Let's talk on the phone. We are connected. Good evening. Yes, please reduce the volume of your TV set, okay? Okay, please when you call that when you call back again, just turn down the volume of your TV set, okay? Hello. Yeah. Good evening, welcome. Yes, coming from Ando. Okay, though we didn't get your name, but go ahead. Coming from Ando. Okay, coming from Mundo here in Kaduna. Yeah. Go ahead. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Uh, let me comment on uh, Saranchi. Mm. What do we expect from a man that is undergoing trial? That's what we expect from him. Mm. An issue of their allowances. I think uh, in the, the in Nigeria masses need to stand up and ask for their rights on these people. Because there's no way we can be spending our money unnecessarily. Two thousand and three budget, this people budget seven point five billion naira for car. Mm. 2017 budget, budget 6.4 billion naira. Budget 11.5 billion naira for tra tra traveling and transportation. 777 million naira for. Oh, the I the line went off. I, I at this point in time I cannot confirm all these figures you're calling out, but of course I know that they are really well, they are mind boggling. Yes, yeah, they are, but know. not to this extent. But anyway, I'll pick this last call them so that we can finish up the review. Then we'll now pick the calls as they come in. Hello, good evening. Hello. Yes, good evening. Welcome. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Good evening. Good morning. Good evening, ma. Welcome. What is your name? Are you there? Okay, I love that call. Please do try call back again. But uh, let's take Wednesday and Thursday so that we can now um, officially have a rundown for all that the events. Now, on Wednesday, if you recollect, the death of the first civilian governor of Oshun State Senator Ishiaka Adeleke has been linked to excessive dose of um, analgesics and seductive alcohol. Now, this was revealed as the pathologist who conducted the autopsy examination on the late Senator Solaji Olufemi testified before the, uh, the, the corner inquest on Wednesday in Oshogbun. Olufemi, who spoke at the Ladoke La Akintola University Technology Teaching Hospital Oshogbo, also refuted the notion that Mr. Adeliki was poisoned, saying that there were no traces of poison or heavy metal in the examined uh, body of the deceased. If you recollect, of course, the senator was the one who passed away not quite long, and the family members were alleging that it's a poison. And lastly, for Thursday, the Northern Elders um, Forum has declared that acting President Yemi Oshibanjo cannot replace President Buhari in 2019. Should anything happen to Buhari, who has been in the United Kingdom for medical um, follow up for an undisclosed ailment? The chairman of the forum, Professor Ango Abdullahi, said should Buhari fail to seek re-election in 2019, the North must retain the presidency by fielding a candidate through the ruling of Progressive Congress, the APC. Now, Abdullahi said although Osiba and Joe, according to the Constitution, should be allowed to complete the current tenure, being Buhari's deputy, he must not contest in 2019 should Buhari fail to recontest for a second term. Of course, that's a wrap for what happened in the week. Of course, that last item there has brought a lot of arguments, you know, looking at the heavy words or um, the kind of order, the kind of restriction placed there. If I want to take the last paragraph, I'm not going to, uh, to put it, I'm just going to put it the way it is. Um, you said, Abdullah said, although Shiba and Joe, according to the constitution, should, uh, should be allowed to complete the, the, the yeah. current tenure, yeah. being by his deputy, but he must not contest. Must not. So, 
<laughs> is it trying to say here that even if, for instance, come 2019, feels I want to be the president of Nigeria, he must not contest? Well, the only thing I have to say to him there is that second term is a privilege, not an entitlement. It is there if you want it, but it is not something you have to take if you don't want it. It is clearly left to the president. And if Osimbajo indeed replaces President Buhari for this duration of the rest of Buhari's term, should anything happen, because that is I don't like, Professor okay, but, Angus. Okay, I don't like that word too. To, I'm so just quoting, quoting him. Okay, should yeah. anything happen? Should the president not seek re-election? Uh, if, uh, if acting president of Simbajo serves out Buhari's term, uh, should anything happen? And then he now feels like he wants to and be president of Nigeria. And he feels he has to be president of Nigeria. He cannot, if you go by the words of no, Abdullahi. No, that is not for Professor Angu Abdullahi to say. First of all, there is no... Is, is by uh, indirectly referring to the infamous zoning arrangement that destroyed PDP. APC does not have such an arrangement. So, Buhari is entitled to seek second term re-election if he so wishes but if he does not seek re-election mm. for a second term anybody else who feels he can serve nigeria as Should well as can, 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 can push contest. himself forward it's not it not depends on nigerians to decide if to we decide want him to, to bear our vote the or scenario professor angu, angu abdullah is actually referring to is similar to the one that brought President, former President Good Gulag Jonathan, where, yes, when we had where he had to serve out the remaining time of President Yara Yara Dua, and, then, and then decide whether he wants to recontest mm, as a president or not. Of and course, if he, you recollect when he finished, when he served out the tenure of Yara Dua, yes, uh, no, and when he decided to recontest, a lot of people said no, no, yes, but he's not contesting, he's supposed to allow the Northerners finish that tenure that he only finished that of his master. And that was what brought I think. Argument. I think it's time we, we outgrow this uh, sense of entitlement. It. Yes, uh, if the no, if the so-called northerners are saying they must, not uh, a northerner must be in power for so, so, so amount of time. What about easterners who have never even fielded a president before? Wouldn't they feel that they are also entitled to such or any other tribe now, in Nigeria? Is it the right thing here? Is either Professor Angola is speaking for the APC? Um, the APC must finish, or he's looking at Nigeria as a whole. It is time for the North to finish their ETS, then move away. Then let's happen from the West, from the East. It's well, I don't, the, the I don't know whether the, I don't know whether the Northerners as from even speak for a generality of Northerners, but they are entitled to, to their opinion as an, as, an organ, as an organization. I've been invited on um, several when they have their meetings, and to a large extent, they speak the mind of the Northerners. No, I don't think so. To a large because extent. they are a pressure group like any other. They are freely constituted of like-minded people. And if we take a vote today, a lot of people don't ag wouldn't agree with them. Because if such, if such, a, a, an arrangement is in place, then I don't even think President Buhari will be in, 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 the, in Aso Villa as president. You know, he's, he's, he's trying to force the same arrangement that hasn't worked for PDP in the past on APC. Mm. And if President Osimbajo, uh, having decided uh, that he wants to contest to become president of Nigeria under any party he wishes, he can very well do so. Anyway, I, let's leave. Uh, it's Friday anyway. Our, our clubs will come and tell us what they think about the stand of the Northern Elders uh, um, Forum as regards to um, the stand of Oshibanjo. Should or if, like we said, we're going to courts, should yeah. anything happen to Buhari or should he uh, not recontest come 2019? Oshibanjo would not contest as a president and would only be allowed to finish his tenure and goes to wherever he wants to go because that's what um, is more like. But I'll take the last, this last item for Thursday. Acting President Shemi Oshiba Njo has stated that he would assent to the 2017 budget. Now, you recall that Information Minister Lai Mohammed had earlier told the State House reporters after the Federal Council Executive Meeting, Chairman Oshiba Njo, that the decision on who to sign the budget would not be taken when the document is transmitted to the presidency. But the Vice President Ve Itwira, statement by his spokesman La Olu Akonde, said the question of who would sign the budget was clear. Now, according to the statement, when the time comes, everything is set and he's satisfied, the acting president will sign the budget. And that's that for, uh, for the week. Uh, this is coming. If you want to link 
this whole um, issue um, that I feel shouldn't hold no water to what is happening. Now, of course, if you recollect when the president traveled, there was this issue of um, the vice president is coordinating <coughs> and not actually um, to act like the president, like some who read meanings to that. Nega, now, if I was the president, if I was the acting president, yeah. I will summarily remove the minister of information from office for saying that. But if he came out tonight he, as yes, usual, he came yes, out to say he never said that. that is, now, is, but again, one may want to link this thing. Um, the president is just away. Here we have Northerners screaming that, Northern Elta is screaming that, should he not come back? Should anything happen? Oshibanjo will just finish and go away. And here we have some people say, oh, Oshibanjo is, is, not, is not acting, no. he, he, he just told the coordinate, he cannot act, he cannot fill in for the president. And here we also have the, the, the our minister saying, Oshibanjo cannot sign because um, it's not yet clear. You know, look at all these things coming. <laughs> if you want to add these things together, are you seeing or is there, is, is there anything that, is, that, that there's been, um, I don't know, that Nigerians do not know? What is this whole... Well, it, appears, whole it, not, appears, not whole it appears that people, you know? people don't seem to understand that the presidency is an institution. It's an office. It's not about one person. It's not about two persons. It's an institution, a democratic institution that anybody can feel at any time okay so pre the, the minister of information if he's really really conscious of the fact that he's talking about an institution would not have made that statement and i'm glad that he denied it because if he indeed said that it would have been a very very unfortunate thing. always said and always deny anyway. <laughs> it would have been a very unfortunate thing because mm -hmm. as far as the constitution is concerned the president or the person acting in his behalf has full powers to discharge the functions of a president. It's in our constitution. Why, why do we need to explain this? The president traveled previously, and this issue never came. And in fact, we had them applauding Oshibanjo for doing a very nice job in the absence of the president. And then the president came out to say, Oshibanjo has done wonderfully well. So why is this second time raising too much dust? Oh, he's, he's, he can't act for the president. He's just I committed. think anybody who wants to serve in the position of any public office should be tested on its knowledge, on his or her knowledge of the Nigerian constitution. Otherwise, they should not be determined to be fit to hold that office because right. that is what guides everything that they do in that office. We're going to open up our lines now because we've been looking at the whole talks from the Northern Elders Forum coming out to, to attack Osibanjo or to, to make things straight now. For for me, that's a mistake, like making things straight, get it known that in case if the president does not come back, Oshi Banjo, you only spend the remaining two years and go away, and you will not recontest come 2019 coming from the Northern Elders Forum. But Rashid is saying that they're not speaking for the entire uh, northern region. I don't know. What do you think from the north? Do you do you where do you place these elders? And of course, this this huge um, statement coming from then. Also looking at the fact that Oshi Banjo has been told that. He, he may not be the one to sign the budget because it's not clear. But of course, the, the Minister of Information has come out to say that he never said that. So, but um, the question is, where did the, this information come from? Who said so? Well, let's pick your calls now as you react to our issues this week. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, welcome to this program. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, I'm calling from Kano. Okay, what's your name, sir? Good evening, I'm calling from Kano. Yes, sir. What is your name from Kano State? I know. My name is Philip. All right, go ahead, sir. Yeah. I think um, the local states are trying to confuse Nigeria as a whole. Why are we, are we, do we have constitution guarding Nigeria? Why is the local state always bringing confusion to the state? I think there is something they need to know. That Nigeria is not for not alone. They should stop the confusion. They should mm. stop the confusion. They want to pass that information across. They should stop the confusion. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Um, more calls now. He's, he called from Kano State, and that's his opinion as regards to the comments coming from the elders, um, um, not the elders forum. Hello, good evening. We are connected. Good evening. No. Okay, good evening. No. We can hear you. Good evening. Hello? You are connected. Good evening. Hello? Okay, please have to let you go. Please do try call back again. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Hello. Welcome to this program. Uh, good evening, Mr. Rashid. Good evening. Uh, 
Emmanuel from Kaduna. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Mr. Emmanuel. Let me begin. Let me begin with uh, what the Minister of Information says. Mm. Uh, if I'm the president, I should have sat him just yesterday, Mr. Rashid Abiyo. We know that the Constitution has given him the power to be the acting president. He should have even made that statement in the first instance. Why would we? That's just exactly what happened with the second situation when they were interviewing him. He said, Who is the president? But he denied it. He okay. said he never said so. Let, uh, no, he has a look. That one is by the way. Let me talk about. Oh. Oh, dear Emmanuel. <laughs> please, sorry. What do you call, have to say about that? Yes, please call back again. I think as the rain is raining here in Kaduna and also the network. Just please try call back again. We'll be able to pick your call. Sorry, Mr. Emmanuel. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to this program. Oh, yes, you called yesterday and I asked you to call back today. Let's hear you today. Let me respond to the other last statement. Okay. That has no right to consent. For I think this is a professor, let me make a constitution, and I think it should be educated. And I believe that it should not make statements that the cause of social in Nigeria. For goodness sake, this professor, out of life, is one of the cabals we have in this government. It's a very unfortunate. Thank you very much. I think for the first time, Mr. Akitudi agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good evening. <laughs> Hello? Yes, we are connected. Good evening. Hello? Please reduce the volume of your TV sets. Wow. I have to let you go, but just to also let you know, if you're calling again, please turn down the volume of your TV set if you want to comment on this program. Hello, good evening. Are you there? Good evening. Yes, welcome. Hello. Yes, good evening. Welcome. We are connected. Good evening. Okay, I have to let him go. So sorry. Please do try a call back again. Like I said, the network and when it's raining, you know what to expect with networks. Hello, good evening. Hello. Yes, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Awolu Soja. I'm calling from Kenya. All right, let's hear your thoughts, Mr. Awolu Soja. Uh, actually, I want to congratulate my children. Again, we lost that call. I may have to stop picking the calls. Uh, that's, that's painful. <laughs> it comes in and just goes off. I'm sorry, Mr. Wolu Soldier. Please, you can try call back. Or perhaps try the second line, the one that ends with um, one five. That's the one I know you, you may be connected to if you call. Hello, good evening. Okay. Again, we lost that call. I just wanted Nigerians to speak up because I don't want it to be as if um, it's just a one-man talk on this program today. Hello, good evening. We are connected. Good evening. Hello? Yes, good evening. Welcome. Hello. Yeah, good evening. How are you? We are fine, thank you. What is your name, sir? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? How are you? Fine. Okay, let's hear a comment. What is your name? The call went off again. Hello, good evening. Hello, but I'm back. I will be to back tomorrow for ICM. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Wolo Soja. I can't believe this. <laughs> I think the network doesn't want him to air his opinion on this program today. Hello. Hello, good evening. I'm the same as I'm Mr. Rashid. Good evening. Okay. Okay, what I want to talk about that sort of uh, Bogona Faraki, mm. on, on the first instance, since he has an issue to answer in the court, so he will support this administration of fighting of corruption. So I will not be surprised with the word he has made. But if he, he joins hand with the president to fight this corruption, he shall even resign his position as a Senate president. That one is by the way. Let me come on the 2017 budget, which the, the Federation says that. They don't know who signed that budget. You see, that man, I should, if I'm the acting president, you should have removed him from that position so that you will know that he's the one in charge. You will not dare his authority. So that was, let's say, you know, the word that will be coming out from his house as the Minister of Information. Okay. So I'm an acting president. Who's the constitution given power? Who power to act as the president? 
I don't know is that why they use that word coordinator when we talk about the differential try to analyze that issue. <laughs> now we agree that on that. Now they try to that means it is true now there are cabal in the villa that have attacked the, 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 the administration. So they should not be hearing uh, the active president authority. He has the power to fight things that we can and that I know you will do. All right I'm then. You. You know, last week, Mister Netanu. Mm. Last week, what uh, Abu Abdullah is saying. I will pray for Mr. President to that and we are praying for him to him to recover full health and to return back to continue from where he stopped. That's what I'm going to make this one issue statement now that we are praying for Mr. President to return back and now if they if get if anything happens to him, or someone just should not say he wants to. He has to he is he is speaking for himself or for the northern and half people. So or someone just has a choice, he has the right if he wants to run for second time, he has the right. It is Nigeria. I will decide if you should go or not. Good evening. Thank you so much, um, uh, Emmanuel, there for your comments on this program today. I think uh, the callers, if you, if you want to have a smooth run with thoughts on this program, I think you just have to make do with a, a, a number, the one that ended with one five. That's the one that you have a long talk. But this other line, I don't know, the number, the line keeps cutting the calls. Yeah. Hello, good evening. There's a female here. Good evening. Hello. Yes, good evening, Ma. Welcome to this program. If you can hear me, my own, uh, my name, my name is Zainab from Kano. Okay, yeah. Zainab from Kano State. What my first contribution is here uh, is that this northern leaders actually they supposed to think about what everybody should say on the media because Nigeria is supposed to be united, not not divided. So whatever one we should say for the person to be to be here as as good as quick as possible. And we need to pray for the opportunity for the students to, to be able to talk to you. You that's all the to say. Thank you so for the All right. Thank you, Zainab from Kano State. So, um, going by what we we heard, it's obvious that some some of us are not in conformity mm -hmm. with this these comments coming is, coming from the northern zone. So, um, of course, that's why right. you you also said before now that you're not sure if you're speaking for the entire northern. Here we have northern are saying no, that this is not um this is not how it should be. They should be more positive. Okay, let's pick this calls now. Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. Yes. My name is uh, Your name is what? Okay, go ahead. Okay, we lost that call. I think a lot of people from Kano State today are, are, call, are calling in to also uh, make their input. Hello? Hello, good evening. Hey, me. It's Kami calling back. Okay. Kami. Yes. Mando. Yes. I remember your you call went off. Go uh, ahead. On Ryan Mohammed's comment, I think you what front thing saying what you said is as a result of what and the liaison officer, Eta Enan, said in the morning in NTA when he said that the, first, the budget will be taken to London for President Buhari to sign. <laughs> so he knowing fully where that there is Kaba in that villa. <laughs> but I, in my own thinking, Lai Mohammed and Osibanjo belong to the, the same this year. So mm. I don't think he may he say that statement to 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 to, to, to respect, respect the vice, uh, the acting president. Mm. No, it's as a result of what Eta Enan said. The morning and what process is that is, is something that should come out from someone that's risen from the rank academic rank up to the professor to come out with such statement. He has traveled around the world for him to have come out from, with such statement is a disappointment to his professorship uh, certificate or whatever they call it or to. All right, then thank you so much um, for your comment. But I'm going to also want to let us know, in as much as we want to make our comment as regards to the stand of the Northern Elders um, Forum as regards to uh, Oshima Manjo come 2019 and Mr. President come 2019, which is right to be civil. Let's mind the kind of words we use, no insults, of course, just make your comment to, to insult the person or cause us passion. That's all we have to say. Just let us know your stand. If you're agreeing with that or if you have something contrary, let's have your say there. Well, thank you for your call all the way from mm -hmm. Montoya and Kaduna. Hello, good evening. Hello. Yes, good evening. Hello, good evening. We are connected. Good evening. Yes, good evening. This is the city from Gombe. From Gombe. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, I just want to talk about the issue of the Northern Elders Forum coming up to voice out that in case something happens to President Wahai, should the should not be. What's your point? Yeah. 
and she was should not be allowed to. What is your point? Yep. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we, you know, the understand and think majority of us are not in support of that statement. You're not in support. Because any person reserves the right to contest if you so wish. We are not in support of this uh, statement. Okay. Uh, I just want to believe it. Most of us are not in support. All right. Uh, it comes to just coming to talk about the issue of spending the 2017 budget. This is acting as the president of Nigeria. He is in the right position to also sign. This is acting as the president of Nigeria. Okay. He is in the right position to sign the budget. So coming to make statement that the budget should be taken. To London. For the president to sign. I think this one is just a joke. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your call. Let's continue picking more calls before we round off our points. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Welcome, sir. Good evening. My name is Emmanuel. I'm calling from Rivers State. Oh, this is a new Emmanuel. Okay, from Rivers. Let's go ahead. Yes, I'm calling from Rivers State. Okay, let's hear you. So, what I want to say is that the amalgamation of Nigeria have ended. How Everybody you? should go in the Let the country be divided into three. Everybody should go in the Thank you. Um, Mr. Emmanuel, I don't know what part you're coming from. <laughs> well, that's his opinion. Anyway, that's your opinion, Mr. Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, if you want to call back again, if you feel there's something you've not said, but um, your opinion, I don't know how many Nigerians want to hold that part with you today. Hello, good evening. Okay, I love that call. Please do call back again. Hello, good evening. You are last caller on this program today. Good evening. Hello. Hi, good evening, sir. Good evening. What's your name? Hello. I can hear you, sir. Good evening. Yeah, I want to make a contribution, please. But I don't know you. What is your name? Yeah. It's my problem about the Northern Elders, their thoughts and uh, uh, thinking. They thought that Nigeria is meant for them alone. But if I were advised, if I am to advise, I will advise them to try as much as we can to see that in as much as we, the Biafrans, want to be on our own, we depend on each other because we stand to benefit from each other. If we happen to come to say that it belongs to us and we must go by the way they are thinking, they are indirectly telling us that we Biafrans we should go. So they should advise themselves and know how they can do for us to be united. But if it is so difficult, please, my dear, let us divide Nigeria. Let the North be their own, South and the West be their own. I think that would be the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. I did say you are our last call on this program, sir, because our news is coming up. Everything you give him, we want to make your last points. Hearing some people calling for um, Nigeria division, Emmanuel, and this last caller. Well, we've had we have opinion from all sides of the divide. Mm. Uh, and I'm glad you came out that the north spoke, the east, even the west spoke yes, on our yes. program today. And, uh, they are all unanimous in the fact that uh, what Professor Angu Abdullahi said is in does not reflect the aspirations of Nigerians mm. in general. Even the last speaker who said he's a Biafran. You know, but he still understands that the we need value of working together. Together, we need each other. As long as we are together, mm. we must work together. So uh, I think uh, our elders should be circumspect in the kind of statements they make, uh, and they should verify whether we actually do agree with them. Are they speaking they, for us? Are they speaking they their purport, own mind? Before they purport to speak for the rest of us. Yeah, and uh, again, one thing I I I, I deduce from all the comments is that um, Nigerians are wiser. A democracy has uh, has grown. Gone are those days where you just come and then speak and then people just follow you hook like sinker. Now, if even we have people from the North Korea say, no, we don't like this stand, you shouldn't speak like this, we want one Nigeria. This is just this is the beauty of democracy. It means we're now wiser. Even come 2019, we should be able to see Nigerians. If you say vote for them, people say, no, 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 I'll vote for your candidate of my choice. And that's beautiful. It means we're getting somewhere. Yeah, we are. We definitely are. Of course, it's been beautiful having you all through Monday and today, Friday, giving you also a round and you also being a part of our discussion today. Thank you all for being there.
Your calls, your comment on this program has always made it wonderful. Thank you all. We appreciate you for being here throughout the week. Join us again on Monday as we bring you fresh episodes of this program throughout the week. Rashid Nyongi, thank you all, all, also for always being here. Yeah, welcome. Well, thank you. My name is Nike Luke. Yeah. To all my crew members, thank you so much for also doing a wonderful job. But do stay by because at 6 p.m. we're going to bring you the word with us, um, from here. So you get more information. But we're saying bye for now and be good. Broadcasting like never before as Liberty TV lands in Lagos. With our full scale broadcasting in Hausa and English languages, residents of the mega city can enjoy up to date news, interactive programs, politics, business news, exciting sports, entertainment, and much more. Connect with us on Go TV channel 110 on Star Times channel 180 and on Free TV channel 775. For your advert placement and sponsorship, please call 080-342-44414 or 081-800-30085. Visit our office at 15B 